Now that we've had a chance to play with the Pixel Streaming front end, let's go into it in more detail. There are a number of wonderful features in here and helpful tools to help with your Pixel Stream. Let's go now. First up, let's cover the easy one, the full screen button. Naturally, I uh, don't think this needs any explanation, full screen toggle. To get into the real meat of the Pixel Streaming front end, this is the settings panel. It contains a variety of settings for different elements of the stream, from the Pixel Stream itself to UI elements, uh, controlling your input, your encoders, WebRTC and commands. We'll go through all of them now to make sure you understand what each of these do. Note that you can mouse over any of these and it will give you a very brief explanation of each thing. So if you ever forget, you can refer back to this video or of course, mouse over your options. Firstly, let's have a look at the pixel streaming settings. First up, signaling URL. This one's important if you're running your signaling server on a different machine than your UE game, as you can run them on separate instances. This allows you to specify what the URL of your signaling server is and connect your running application to that. Next up, streamer ID. This one is a drop down menu and it allows you to select which streamer you would like to connect to, assuming you have more than one streamer available at the time. The next two are very similar, but serve slightly different functions. Auto connect to stream, it's disabled by default, but if you enable this, it will, it will skip the click to start prompt when you connect to a stream. The next one, autoplay video, which is enabled by default, skips the play button that shows up when you connect to a stream. Normally, when you click to start, you'll be presented with a play button, and then you'll click again. Having both of these enabled means that the stream will just start immediately. Next, we have browser send offer. This one only exists for compatibility reasons for older versions of pixel streaming, where the browser used to send the offer. It's very useful when testing against older versions of UE, such as 4.26. Next, we have Use Microphone, as you've seen in the previous video, enables the microphone function. We also have Start Video Muted, where if your project has sound in it, it won't play through. Prevents audio from streaming. Next, we have the Prefer SFU. We haven't covered the SFU yet, so we will go over this one in more detail later, but this will prefer to connect through the SFU rather than a standard peer-to-peer -peer connection. Next up is Quality Controller. The peer that's connected and has Quality Controller enabled is the one that controls the stream quality. The stream will adjust according to that peer, as well as they'll have control of things such as the resolution and other elements of quality. Next up, Force Mono Audio. Fairly self-explanatory, forces mono audio through the stream. Next up we have Force Turn. Similar to Prefer SFU, we haven't covered turn yet, so we will go into this in more detail later, but it is a helpful thing that forces a turn connection rather than a stun connection. Suppress Browser Keys. We have this one on by default. This prevents certain keys from activating, such as F5 to refresh the page. Normally, F5 would refresh the page and then reset your stream. So with this enabled, that prevents that and then would use the F5 key bound in UE instead. The next three are fairly self-explanatory. AFK if idle, times out the experience if the user is AFK. AFK timeout, you can specify how long the AFK timer is, defaulting to two minutes. And lastly, max reconnects. It's the number of reconnects the application will attempt when the streamer disconnects. Moving on to the UI section, let's have a look at these. Firstly, match viewport resolution. This one is interesting. It will actually adjust the resolution of the application based on the size of your window. So if I resize this a few times, you can see that the application is changing. Very helpful. Control scheme, locked mouse. By default, this is set to locked, but this allows you to toggle between a locked mouse and a hovering one. So as you can see, a locked mouse will capture the mouse when you click on the stream. However, if we set this to hovering, you'll now have a separate mouse that hovers. This still allows you to interact with the stream, but allows you to also click on different UI elements if necessary. Color scheme, dark mode and light mode. Fairly self-explanatory, most people will use dark mode. <laughs> I won't go through all the input options separately, as they're all fairly self-explanatory, but this allows you to toggle whether or not your different types of input are sent through to the streamer. Keyboard, mouse, touch, gamepad and XR. We keep them all on by default, as there's no harm in having them all on by default, and you never know what people are going to connect and try to play with. You will need to toggle this accordingly based on your experience that you've created, of course. Next, we have the encoder section. This is an important one and controls your stream quality. To make sure you have sufficient information about this, I'll link the stream tuning page available on the UE official docs. UP stands for quantization parameter. The lower the value, the higher quality the stream. 0 and 51 are the defaults for the min and max, which is unbound. However, if you want your stream to maintain within a certain level of quality, you can restrict this boundary. 
If you set the minimum to 51, for example, you'll end up with an extremely low quality stream. Let's restart that and show that in action. There you go. This can be really helpful, as it can help you adjust your stream quality based on your connection quality. Note that pixel streaming will automatically try to cater between, and it will adjust the value within the bounds accordingly. So if you set the minimum to 51 like I have here, you'll always get the worst quality. I highly suggest reviewing the stream tuning page I've linked below in the description, as it will give you a lot more information regarding these values. Preferred codec. This one is extremely helpful, and allows you to change the encoder that the stream is using straight from the front end. As you can see, it defaults to H.264, but we can switch it to VP8 or VP9 accordingly. Simply, simply select your option and click restart. And there you go. I'd like to note that you can see a lot of these changes up in the URL. Up here, you can see that we're now set to preferred codec VP8. WebRTC settings. These allow additional control of your stream quality, starting with max FPS. This specifies the maximum frame rate that WebRTC will try to transmit those frames. This is separate from the application FPS, which we'll show you shortly. Minimum and maximum bitrate. As you would assume from the name, this allows you to set the minimum and maximum bitrate. This is a WebRTC value that helps you further control the quality of the stream. I recommend checking out the stream tuning guide that I've linked below, as this will give you more information alongside the min and max QP values. Lastly, we have the command section. As you might expect, these allow you to use a few specific commands with UE and pixel streaming. Firstly, show FPS. Toggling this on and hiding the settings panel, we can see that the UE FPS is displayed here. And we can toggle that back off again. Easy. Next, request keyframe. This one, as you might expect from the name, requests a keyframe from the pixel stream. This can be helpful if your stream is stuck and you need to make sure that it's updating the current information. And lastly, restart stream. We've used this a couple times by now, and it just restarts your connection to the stream. Useful if you need to actually enable a lot of these settings. To finish off the front end panel, let's have a look at the information section. This contains a variety of information regarding your current connected session. An important note that a lot of this is only currently designed to work with Chrome. There will still be no problems with using pixel streaming on other platforms such as Firefox, but some of these values won't update. Not to worry, those values will display Chrome only in that circumstance. I suggest using this page to review the current state of your stream. This contains a lot of confirmation about some of the settings you may have just changed. For example, we can see the video resolution we've set to, we can see the encoder that we're currently using. We can also see what the QP parameter is currently set to as well. Furthermore, you can use a latency test. If we click Run Test, that'll do a quick check to determine what your current latency to the connection is. As we're running this as a local stream, it's very low values and doing just fine. Again, this is something that will only work in Chrome, but we may update that in future. I'd like to quickly bring your attention to the frame rate value, as there is a little separate thing with this. This frame rate is separate from the frame rate we saw earlier. What we saw earlier through UE is the, what the frame rate that the application is actually running at. This is WebRTC's frame rate and what the stream is running at. They are different. This can be really helpful to determine whether or not if you're getting poor quality, if the application is running slow, or if the stream is running slow. Very worth keeping an eye on. You'll also notice if the stream is running slow, things like frame drop and packet loss. These let you know whether there are other underlying problems. Last, and definitely not least, we have this helpful indicator in the bottom left. This is just a little indicator to show you your current encoding quality, stream quality. You'll notice if you refer back in the video when we change the QP to 51, this dropped down to the red, because forced a low quality stream. Note that everything you've seen in this video is all the default pixel streaming front end. We provide a bit of information on how to expand upon this, and it's assumed that you'll create your own front end accordingly. Check down in the description below, as I will link the front end page of the pixel streaming infrastructure, which provides a bit more information. Now that we've covered a lot of elements of pixel streaming, I think it's time we move over to the cloud and start having a look at deploying on cloud platforms.